So behind me right now is the 42 inch 2024 LG C4. And guys, I'm really hyped for this review because apparently not only is it supposed to be significantly brighter, but also we're finally moving to 144 Hertz, which should make this a much better option as a PC monitor than it has been in the past. But the question remains, is it really that much better or because it's still not using a new MLA panel that we see in the G series, is it gonna fall short of our expectations? Well, let's go ahead and find out. In terms of the specs, this is a 42 inch 4K 144 Hertz W OLED display with G-Sync and FreeSync compatibility. And in terms of the overall design, as always, the front of it looks absolutely excellent, very premium and minimalist looking with almost no visible bezels, making it a perfect option for any desk or wall mounting application. Speaking of wall mounting, while it does come with a stand, it doesn't move in any direction. So you might wanna mount it with a TV TV mount, which it is compatible with. However, if you wanna use a standard monitor arm, you will need to adapt it. So I'll try and throw an Amazon affiliate link to an adapter in the description below as well. Now, in terms of the ports, pause if you need to, but the most important thing is that it does come with four HDMI 2.1 ports, meaning no black screens and no weirdness with Nvidia cards, as that does give it enough bandwidth to avoid display stream compression. Now, in terms of the price and the warranty, it comes in at a pretty steep $1,500 and has a one year warranty. So yeah, the price is pretty high, but the specs do look really good, especially considering this has by far the best glossy coating on the market. We'll talk about that later, but overall, yeah, it's looking really good. The question is, is it worth that $1,500 or are they asking way too much and the pressure from the 32 inch OLEDs will overtake it. Well, let's go ahead and find out first by talking about the color. And I will tell you my first impressions are an SDR it looks absolutely amazing. And my experience with LG is with just a little bit of adjustments, you can get very accurate colors out of their displays, making them, at least for me, a great option for editing my videos. But at times, at really high brightness, the color luminance will fall short of quantum.oled in HDR. Now, in terms of the accuracy for SDR, it is pretty good in the sRGB mode. However, it is definitely off in terms of the white points. So I was able to fix that as well as the RGB balance significantly. And by the way, I will have all the best settings for this display as well as any other displays that I review linked in my Patreon in the description below. I highly recommend it for this display. And it also gets you access to the Discord and help support future reviews. But moving on to HDR, it is a bit of a mess out of the box, but thankfully I was able to correct it once again. It will slightly over brighten some stuff and it just won't look quite right. Now, moving on to the color volume in SDR, it is pretty decent. We're getting around 91% DCI P3, but in HDR, like I mentioned, W OLED in my testing appears to not do so well at these higher brightness levels. I'm not sure if it's because of the white subpixel or what's going on here, but only 70% does definitely put it far short of quantum.oled. But now let's go ahead and talk about the brightness because, well, this might just be the most important aspect of an OLED today. And I'll tell you my first impressions right away are, it definitely seems much brighter than last year's model, especially in game mode as filmmaker mode does appear to be maybe a little bit better when it comes to the color luminance, but the game mode with HGIG actually seems to be slightly brighter on some highlights. At least that's what I was noticing on my desktop. So great to see that it's definitely getting brighter and better in terms of the colors. Now, in terms of the actual window brightness that I measured, here you can see that while it does fall short in the 100% window, which would be important for, say, looking at spreadsheets or other very bright full screen applications, when compared to, say, the 32-inch quantum.oleds or even the OLED TVs, well, actually in the 10% window, which is very pertinent in terms of what you can expect to see out of HDR games, it actually far surpasses the 32 inch OLEDs. Now it does still get crushed by the 55 inch TVs, but hey, what do you expect? Now let's talk about an actual game. Here, Baldur's Gate 3, we can see that 
actually surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, it's significantly brighter than the 32 inch quantum dot OLED. So yeah, it might not look super impressive on paper, but when you actually fire up a game, this thing can definitely hold its own, only once again getting crushed by the most expensive, most modern 55 inch OLED TVs, such as the G4 and a modified S90C. Now, in terms of the actual latency, is this good for online competitive gaming? I would say yes, technically it is slower than say the 240 hertz 32 inch OLEDs or even some 144 hertz LCDs, but we're talking about a very, very small amount here, guys and I would have no issue online gaming with this thing, and I'd only look at 240 hertz if I was really getting into competitive gaming. Now, in terms of the motion performance, here you can see that once again, OLED is showing its strengths here. OLED is so fast with those near instantaneous response times, and at 144 hertz, you can see that the 42 inch LG C4 is absolutely destroying the 144 hertz mini LED TV. Now, once again, the 240 hertz OLEDs are gonna be even a further step up, but regardless, this is very good motion performance. Now, in terms of the text clarity in subpixel layout, this does appear to be a blue, green, red, white subpixel layout as it has been for some time. And I will say that this is definitely gonna be very subjective, but overall, I do think that the clarity is better than quantum dot OLED. It seems like there's just generally less fringing and most text against a white background looks nearly perfect, but against other darker colors, fringing can be just as bad or even at times worse than quantum dot OLED. So I think this is gonna be highly dependent on what you do, but for me, I think it is a bit more clear. But now let's go ahead and talk about the finish because this is the best finish, not only in the market today, but possibly that's ever been created. Not only do you get a glossy coating, which allows for the best color vibrancy and contrast perceivably, but also there's none of that disgusting oily matte grain. It is just so crystal clear, something that you cannot get on a matte display. But to make it even better, not only is it a beautiful glossy display, it does not suffer from the raised black issues that we see on quantum.oled, meaning that you can put this in a room with the lights on and still get those pure black black. So I think this is gonna be a huge deciding factor for a lot of people who want the superior clarity of a glossy coating, but don't wanna have the magenta looking tint on the quantum dot OLEDs if you can't control your lighting. But what about the viewing angles and the uniformity? And here's where it does start to fall apart a little bit, guys. Unfortunately, because this is not using the latest MLA tech from LG, it still suffers from what I would call bad viewing angles. Now, of course, they're nowhere near as bad as LCD or mini LED. It's a huge step above that, but if you look at it at an angle, or maybe you look at the corners of the display out of the corners of your eye, you will see the center of the display or where you're looking looks a little bit more red and the parts out of your focus look a little bit green. And this is more noticeable as you start to view it from an angle. It also did have vertical banding on dark gray screens out of the box, but that can be fixed, or at least it was fixed for me by just simply doing a manual pixel clean. And I've done this many times with many WOLEDs, it almost always fixes it. So do be sure to do that if you notice any vertical banding. But the brightness uniformity, thankfully, was not too bad. Now, in terms of the menu and firmware, it's super awesome. It's gonna be better than any other monitor on the market, gives you a lot of options, no G-Sync flickering, but there is gonna be the issue of dimming. This is gonna be a big downside of using a TV versus a monitor. The monitors typically have less dimming issues, in fact, almost none when it comes to static desktop usage, whereas the TVs 
will, if you're just pulling up the same image for a very long period of time, slowly dim over time, and that can be annoying. So there you have it, guys. The LG C4, at least in the 42 inch size, definitely is a huge improvement over what I've seen in the past personally. And for those of you out there looking for a larger screen and you want a glossy panel without all the raised black issues that Samsung currently has with their Quantum Dot OLED 32 inch monitors, this could be a really good option, especially considering sometimes it's even brighter than those monitors, despite it using old WOLED technology. However, of course, those 32 inch monitors have their own strengths, such as the higher 240 hertz refresh rate, less dimming issues, as well as a higher full screen brightness, making them potentially better as a day to day desktop monitor. But overall, I think it's a really good option. It just needs to drop in price, probably from the $1,500 it is now down to around $999. And I think it's going to be, again, a really, really awesome monitor for those of you out there looking for a larger size and the best coding on the market.